Hi. In this video, we're going to introduce uh, independence of paths and antiderivatives. Let's take a look at an introductory example. Let's suppose that you're asked to find the integral of z squared along the contour c from 1 to minus 1, but we're given three different contours to find the integral along. The first is this half circle, the second is the line segment, and the third is this path that's made up of a line segment followed by a portion of a parabola. Now, in each of these cases, uh, we would find the integral, typically, by finding a parameterization of the curve. And then we would take our parameterization, and we would substitute it into the function z squared, and then replace dz by z prime of t dt. And then uh, having this integral, which is now a combination of a real part and an imaginary part, we would integrate both the real and imaginary parts. And it turns out in this example that the value is minus 2 thirds in every case. Well, this will happen sometimes, that some integrals will be the same, no matter which contour you integrate along. And so we'll come up with a definition for that. We'll say that an integral is independent of path if its value is the same for all contours that start and end at the same points, so long as the contours belong to a domain D. All right, so we would say that this integral, the integral of z squared from 1 to minus 1, is independent of path because it seems, at least from these uh, uh, these examples we've done, that the contour doesn't matter. You get the value of negative two thirds in each case. Well, this could be handy potentially for us because let's say you wanted to find the integral of z squared along this contour and just this contour, but you knew that the integral value was independent of path. Well, then wouldn't it be easier to compute it along a very simple contour rather than this complicated one? You'd get the same answer. So the big question we want to ask is, for which functions and in which types of domains is the integral of f of z independent of the contour c that you follow? Well, let's examine this question and let's take a look at the types of functions and domains that we've been discussing recently. We'll find that in these cases, actually, the the integrals will be path independent. Specifically, if f is an analytic function and the domain that your contours lie in is simply connected, then the value of the integral of f along the contour c is actually independent of the path c you take. You'll get the same value for the integral no matter which contour you follow. So with that in mind, let's take a look at an example. We're asked to compute the integral along c of the function e to the z. Now we know that the function e to the z is entire. It's analytic everywhere in the complex plane. Now the contour c is kind of kind of complicated. We're, we're starting at i, we're taking a line segment out. We don't even know how far it is. We're gonna then pick up a circle until we get back to uh, a shorter point, uh, uh, a little bit shy of the entire circle. And then we'll take a line circle, a line segment back to the point zero. Now I don't even know how to parameterize this because I don't know exactly where we stop our line segments. But using this theorem, I know that because we satisfy the conditions, the value of the integral will be independent of the path. And so I can completely ignore this path and then replace it by a simpler one. And the simp simplest path I can think of from i to zero is the line segment that starts at i and ends at zero. So let me call that path d. I can parameterize that line segment very simply and then to compute the integral along c, I'll just compute the integral along d because I know that they'll have the same answer. So parameterizing, uh, sticking our parameterization into the function, integrating, I'll end up with this value, one minus the cosine of one minus i, sine, I times the sine of one. Right, well that's potentially very useful. Um, it seems that when path independence applies, to compute a contour integral, all we need to do is choose the easiest contour possible from the first endpoint to the second, and then integrate along that contour. Now in all the examples we've done so far, we have uh, parameterized the contour, we've made the substitution, we've integrated, but you'll notice a few things more about these, uh, these integrals. In each case, we ended up using the fundamental theorem of calculus at the end, and we got there also with a u substitution. In each of these cases, you'll see that there's a u substitution we're going to put in um, before we get to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So can we leverage this, this sameness, these patterns that always seem to come up? Can we use them to get more shortcuts to make computing the integrals even easier? 
Well, the answer is yes, and maybe you have an inkling of what's going to happen. We're going to start by defining an antiderivative. Now, the definition is uh, pretty similar to what you saw in real variable calculus. We're going to suppose that a function f is continuous on a domain, capital D. An antiderivative of f is a function, capital F, for which the derivative of capital F is equal to our original function f for each point in that domain. All right, so now at this point, uh, we'll recall that we've been sort of quietly uh, listing a bunch of derivative rules throughout the chapters. We haven't made a big deal out of them because we haven't really needed to, but these are a couple of the rules that we've seen so far. You've got your, your constant sum, product, quotient, and chain rules. You've got a power rule, the derivative of e to the z, uh, these derivative rules for the natural log and the complex power function. Now these rules re uh, refer to the principal branch of these functions. And then we have derivative rules for sine, cosine, the hyperbolic functions, and there are a bunch more uh, trigonometric and hyperbolic functions I haven't listed there, as well as uh, derivative rules that appear in your text for functions that we haven't really discussed. Now for each of these rules, there's a corresponding antiderivative rule. If you take any, uh, if you take the domain of the function in the left, then the function on the left is an antiderivative for the function on the right inside that domain. So e to the z is the antiderivative for e to the z. Cosine is the antiderivative for the function minus sine, and so on. All right, now what are antiderivatives for? What, what do we use them for? Well, there's going to be a fundamental theorem of calculus we can use, even for complex uh, functions. We're going to call it the fundamental theorem for contour integrals, and it's pretty much like you'd expect it to be. If f is any continuous function on a domain d, and capital F is an antiderivative for F in that domain, then for any contour you want, um, the integral of F along that contour is just going to be what we get when we plug in the endpoints into the antiderivative and subtract. We'll have capital F of the terminal point minus capital F of the initial point, and that will give us the value of the integral. Now because uh, this uh, completely ignores what the path was. All we had to do was take the antiderivative, which didn't depend on the path, and then evaluate at the endpoints. Um, we're going to, in our notation, just write the endpoints rather than c. And in fact, we'll do this not only when we have an antiderivative, but in any situation where the integral is independent of path. You'll find it uh, common to write the in endpoints rather than the, no no the notation for the contour c. So let's end this video by going back to some of our examples. You'll recall that we found the integral along uh, this contour by finding a parameterization and uh, going through the process of integrating the real integral after we made the substitution of our parameterization. Now because z squared is analytic in the entire complex plane, I, and it, I can find an antiderivative for it, I know a rule for that, I can use the fundamental theorem of contour integrals. I'll just say the integral of z squared along this contour is going to be the integral from 1 to minus 1, and that's going to be the antiderivative evaluated at those two endpoints. And when I do that, I get the value of minus 2 thirds that I came up with before. Our second integral, to find the uh, integral of e to the z along this crazy looking contour from i down to 0, I can follow the same process. I can uh, just write, instead of writing it as a contour integral along the contour C, I'll just keep track of the endpoints. I started at I, I ended at 0. I'll recall the antiderivative of e to the z. I'll evaluate at those two endpoints, and I'll get the same value that I had on the previous slide. All right, so if you're interested in finding the value of contour integrals, life just got very interesting. Now in the next two videos, we're going to talk about some of the, uh, the fine print, uh, some of the interesting ideas conceptually, and some of the cautions to be aware of as you're evaluating these integrals. See you there.